Pour la prochaine présentation, maintenant, on va s'adresser. For now, for now, we're going to be talking about and to software developers. We're going to be look, focusing on one of the key components. We talked about FSDL, which is the publishing uh, language. We're now going to be talking about it as a software library. This may not sound familiar to some of you, and this is the reason why I would like to ask Michelle to join me now on stage. Michelle Lefranc. Michelle, installe-toi. Uh, prends ce micro, en effet. Michelle. Good evening. Make yourself comfortable. Um, grab a mic. And um, are you good to go? Is your computer ready? Yeah. Very good. Well, um, I think uh, all we need is your slides at this point. Merci Michel d'avoir accepté de And again Michel thank you so much for being with us to tell us about your work with OP3FT and about the FSDL uh, software library we're going to tell people how to use this software library to create software I won't say anything more um just uh, tell us a little, a little bit about what you do at OP3FT Good evening at OP3FT, I'm part of the tools team. So we work with C developers who are working um, really at the core of the developments we make at OP3FT. So I work a lot with uh, that. Um, we work with development um, and, uh, environments, uh, you know, uh, in order to, for the C um, code to work and, and, and also to, for different components to be um, exposed to uh, more. Um, we are um, really working on the entire life cycle of software. We, have, uh, we do a lot of quality as well. Uh, but again, m most of the development we do is C. Okay, we'll come back to C, which is very familiar at OP3FT. It's an uh, IT programming. Uh, language. So, um, Michelle, to put a little bit of context around all this, tell us why creating software uh, uh, on top of the uh, of FSDL and is so important for uh, the user community. Well, I have to tell you that it's important, but it's not an obligation. Um, Earlier on when we talked about FSDL codes, it's a language which is based on XML, which means it can be handwritten. It's a language which is uh, works quite well with the gra graphic design in uh, Fragments Player and the uh, the graphic engine. Um, it's um, all you need to do is, it, is to have a text editor, which is configured um, well, and uh, you can start. Um, it's it's a good way to discover it. This being said. Uh, once you start, once you know what you want to do with the language, once you have a better understanding of what you want to develop, well, that's where you have to start thinking about tools to go faster, to make things uh, simpler, and to boost uh, your productivity, your development productivity. Right, some people want to do things manually, and other people um, will do things differently. So, a software library to create tools using FSDL. Why is OP3FT providing this technology brick? Well, simply to make the life of developers easier. Creating a Frogan site is very simple using FSDL. Uh, however, the rendering, the graphic design, 
and that that's the work of Frogren's player and the uh, FSDL library that particular step is much more uh, complex and if we would have to do that from scratch it would be quite fastidious so what makes it so fastidious then well not everything is complicated some things are quite simple in terms of rendering um, but there are some more complex uh, elements there are three here uh, block displays um, of international text um, with all the languages is complex. Uh, combining layers is difficult. With FSDL, you make, uh, you design slides by superposed layers. It's not always very easy. And then some of the graphical effects, uh, again, require knowledge and expertise right so this work is done by the is carried out by the library is that correct yes and again it's not an obligation we could have taken the technical specs with all the algorithms and done it from scratch but that would have been a considerable waste of time and quality at the end of the day even if all al algorithms are provided you know, there will always be a little bit of a gap in the implementation, which means you won't have exactly the same rendering, the same effect, you know, a blur or something. Um, and one of the promises of the technology is to have precision, uh, very high precision uh, on all platforms. And, uh, and this is a promise we, we really want to keep, high precision in the renderings. So this is why we've decided to make this library available. It's the same one Frogan's player uses to have the same precision uh, in, a, in, a, in a consistent and homogenous way. Right. So you will see, as you, you will hear us say library, we talk about, uh, in French, we have two terms. Um, I'll try to be consistent in French, so this does not apply to you if you're listening to the English. In English, it's just software library. T tell me a bit more about the library. Where is it? It's on frogrens.org, right here, www.frogrens.org slash en resources fsdl slash access.html. It's ready to use. It's free of charge, available for all. It's on Linux. Uh, Windows and Mac OS, and it's uh, available for all kinds of software, really. Okay, very good. So it can be downloaded for free, it can be used for free, right, and you can redistribute for free as well. No royalties. To redistribute it when, uh, if you decide to do so. Right, okay. So, the software library is the rendering engine of Frogrens Player. Is that correct? Well, it's more than that. It's three things. Earlier on, I talked about the technical spec. It's uh, the reference implementation of the FSDL technical spec. It is one of the software libraries included in Frogrens Player. We talked about CSR earlier. That's another library, which is also in it. And it is the Frogrens Player rendering engine, which perform, performs the graphical rendering of Frogrens slides that are in memory. You talked about C when you talked about development and uh, development environment in Frogrens. Um, this library is in developed in what? In C. Um, because that's how you get the cross-platform benefit, which is really important for us. It's uh, low level, which means you can you can you can you know put all the algorithms and get uh, acceptable performance, and um, it's a language you can use with all people who are using C, C plus uh, plus, and even Objective C. So it's a language. So the, all these languages, sorry, are compatible with with C. So does that include all developer profiles? No, no. Um, a lot of developers work with other languages. 
So in order to reach these other languages, which don't have, which are not compatible with C, we had to develop what we call wrappers. Uh, and wrappers are used to communicate with other languages. Too. So that's how we can switch from a language to another language. Okay, so C, with C, thanks to a wrapper, you can go to another language. That's exactly true. And right now, we are, we, we are using these wrappers. They're very technical wrappers. We haven't really, uh, we don't really have the right transcription of Java. Uh, that, that, that's, what it, that's what we mean by non-opinionated. Uh, we're simply using this technical wrapper at this point. We consider that that's good enough. Um, so we haven't really decided to go for one language or another or one culture uh, rather than another. So with this, um, when you download the library, you have two wrappers, one for Java, which includes all the JVM, so Python, uh, 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 Clojure, Groovy, and we have a PHP wrapper, that's server-side, which uh, in, you know covers all the modern versions of PHP, 5.4 and um, onwards. So I guess your team is planning on going um, doing more? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, we are also going to be working with the .NET platform, again with different languages. Python uh, is also, um, we're getting there. Pascal uh, as well. And then there will be, uh, we're not going to leave it there. Uh, pretty much all languages can interface in one way or another with C. So we're going to go we we'll get to prioritize things. If all of a sudden we have a priority which, uh, uh, you know, decides to, um, they need a wrapper, we will make a wrapper. How complicated is it to make a wrapper? Um, and as a user, um, you know that I'm very naive when it comes to language. Uh, if you give it in C, can't I? play with it to use it in Java? Well, you might. You might. Um, the problem is, in order for Java to communicate it with C, you need a genie layer. You may or may not be familiar with this, but it's not in Java. It's developed uh, in C. So as a, uh, since you're a Java developer, you would have to still have to develop that layer, that C layer, uh, in order to communicate with the, uh, with the library. So operationally speaking, it's, it's a waste of time. And we don't, we don't want you to have to go through that waste of time. We, we think we're in a better position. And therefore, we decided to do it ourselves and provide these wrappers. The good thing is they are ready to use. They're off the shelf, so to speak. This makes developers operational immediately on our library, no matter what language they use. It's very straightforward, very convenient. Okay. Okay, so what you're saying is that there is an environment behind all this. You can't just uh, provide a wrapper in, for so many environments and so many languages, especially given the fact that the software library is updated every week. So, concretely, um, what happens? Well, very quickly, we realized that indeed it was impossible to do things manually uh, without making mistakes. And um, we had a we had an environment for cross-platform for uh, and, and and likewise we decided to develop an environment for cross-language. So four or five years ago, we developed a tool called UPIL, which is Uniform Portable in Interface Language. Once again, Uniform Portable Interface Language, which um, 
addresses the cross-language issue. Okay, so was there anything before UPIL that uh, could have done the same job? Um, why did you do everything from scratch? Well, the answer is yes and no. There were some attempts to address the, uh, the the switch from one language to another, but not exactly what we had in mind, not exactly what we needed. And I won't go into the details because it's a bit complicated. But uh, typically, you, you start with C and you want to go to another language. And we had more complex considerations. We didn't want to play with a tool that existed, but that wasn't exactly what we needed. We didn't want to tweak. Uh, um, and then there are some tools that we thought were not sustainable. So therefore, we ended up deciding, decided to uh, do things from scratch. And we came up with something quite sustainable. That is UPIL, again, the Uniform Portable Interface Language. So what's the concept behind UPIL? Well, we have two separate things in UPIL. First of all, we have a based interface description language. Uh, it's the uh, it's XML based. Its functionalities are very limited, and that's why it it works so much better than what we had. So it it is a bit frustrating because we're restrict uh, forcing some restrictions upon ourselves, but at the same time we had to find a common denominator and something that worked, and. Uh, that's uh, how we address this, by having this uh, description language, this language portability. And the second component, with once you have a, a, a uniform uh, interface language, uh, you have to generate these wrappers. We did not want to have to write them manually. So today, things are done in a much more iterative and agile way you change the XML file that describe, describes the interface and immediately you can generate wrappers without any risk of mistake and it works. It works and of course if you have additional languages you like to add with the same agility you can do so and generate more wrappers. So you have a lot of agility, it's really quick, it's convenient and it works. Okay, that sounds pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, how about showing us? Do you need any help? Let's take a look at UPIL once again. The uh, uniform portable interface language in a text publishing solution. So, here is what I would like to um, to share with you. So, this is a UPIL. UPIL file, just an example. So I took the FSDL uh, library, but the same thing's true with all libraries that are, libraries that are published by OP3FT. Again, it's part of our statutes. We are committed to publishing these libraries to make them accessible in a portable fashion to the general public. So in FSDL, we have a point of entry in the API. It's called render perform. It is right there. It's named, it's documented, and this function uses up four arguments, has four arguments. The first one is a uh, 32-bit uh, slide handle. Then we have the uh, uh, documentation that comes with it. It's quite natural. You can see that this entire function is described, the functionality is described, the parameters are described. And again, it comes along with the associated documents. I don't think I need to go any further in this format. Here's a function. There are a lot of elements in UPIL um, that we could go into at this point. What I can say is this, with this function, once you're in UPIL, I said we could generate codes, which is true for C. You generate uh, things here. 
So this is what the function we just saw in UPIL once it's generated in C language. And uh, with all the existing documents, we're able to generate this block right here. If you're a developer, this looks quite familiar. This is an oxygen block. And right here, you have this C function once again. It is now formatted in a uh, different syntax, uh, which is... Uh, uh, so this, is this C language? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, with the same XML component, you can generate Java. Here it is. So this is... Hold on. Uh, let me scroll down. So here's the same function now in Java. Now the, the syntax is now different. If you're a Java developer, this should look familiar once again. And once again, you have the same parameters. So you have the Java doc. Again, if you're a Java developer, this looks familiar and all the additional stuff. And I could show you the exact same thing for any other UPIL component. Again, one description, a universal description written in XML. Of course, sticking to the UPIL syntax, you can generate all wrappers to expose this functional, which was originally developed in C for to other languages. Okay, so this is Java, but it could it could have been PHP. It, yes, it could have been PHP. It could have been any of the, la the other languages I mentioned earlier. Right. Okay. So, concretely, what do you what do you provide developers with in order to and um, to to work in a better way? Do you provide them with codes? Well, there are multiple things we do for developers. L'idée principale, hein, c'est que dans cette période de lancement, on veut que les gens soient opérationnels tout de suite avec cette librairie. Again, what we want is people to be immediately operational with this library. Okay, the library package is an all-in-one. It, it it really has it's it's all uh, encompassing. It has uh, the library, the, the the wrappers. You don't there's no dependency on on, on third parties. We have this, what we just saw, all the documentation, XML, uh, Java, we have examples, we have, I mean, you want it, you name it, we have it. So if you are a developer, no matter what you use, you are immediately operational with this. Okay, so no need to do anything if I'm a developer. Nope. Right. You go to frogans.org, you download the package. Is there only one package for all wrappers? Yes, it's one package. All the wrappers are in the same package. Um, we can take a look at it later. Uh, that way you know where to go. It's pretty straightforward. You can easily find what you're looking for in the package. Okay, so you, you download the library and you are ready to go. Uh, then how about the software? Any software. Any software, web applications. For example, we talked about PHP. Um, it's, it's a peculiar uh, 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 environment. Um, you can, of course, use it on desktop applications. Authoring tools, for example, and in the future, in the near future, mobile uh, applications. The Java layer we described earlier, we use for, for, for Frogan's player on Android, for example. The graphic layer is Java, so we use these layers ourselves for Frogan's player. Right, I see. So on mobile platforms, we could use the library for a mobile app, for example, um, a Frogan's site, a mobile app. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll talk about usage, uh, usages later. So once the library is in the software, um, what does it do exactly? It does two things. First of all, it validates an FSDL document. It tells you if there's a mistake, if it's if it has a problem, if you are missing a parameter, because, you know, because of the context, and it of course provides the graphical 
uh, rendering using various modes. There are six modes, uh, rendering modes that are displayed here, you know, one prepared resource uh, or one uh, or a slide only, uh, one layer only. We have uh, a slide without rendering constraints. Okay, so it draw ups uh, the slide in memory. Is that correct? Yes. How could you um, could you show us? And uh, all the rendering modes are not available yet with the software library, but as Michel said, what's important is the uh, level of granularity uh, with the rendering. You can start working on a very small section of a slide, either a resource uh, that you would like to um, put, or a mask, for example, or a layer, or a slide with its different buttons. Uh, I don't think we talked about rendering constraints, so maybe we should uh, talk about these. Uh, rendering constraints is something Amory mentioned. Uh, these, what, what are they? They are inherent. There are inherent rules to um, Frogon's technology in order to keep a promise, which is to be available on all screens. FSDL won't let you have all usages when you're going to create a site, a Frogon site. And uh, to make this uh, understandable, let me give you an example. If I make a small site, 10 pixels, 10 pixels by 10 pixels, a very tiny site, okay? If I put that in my FSDL document, and then I, I, then, I, I then put it in the player. I have a 10 pixel by 10 pixel um, site. If you're on a for, if you're on a watch, or if you have a, a TV screen, high density screen, uh, you know there are some rendering constraints. So what Frogan's player does is that it, it tells you to use surface which is sufficient enough. You have 640 by 480 pixels. Try to use a good part of that for your composition. And if you don't, Frogan's player might say it won't be browsable. Without going into the technical Considerations, this is, in a nutshell, what this means. Just keep that in mind when designing your fragrance site in order to make it accessible everywhere. Michelle, sorry, I interrupted you uh, once again, and I know we are behind schedule. At this stage, we talked about Java. I wanted to show you an Eclipse project to show you how I organized the elements in order to work out a concrete project so uh, in the li in the library so i uh, collected the as fsdl library here the java wrapper which generates the second library which is just a wrapper side i have the fonts which are obviously within the library which uh, give this rendering of text and I also captured in the wrapper part I also had a set of Java files the what we saw earlier was from this file and from all this dedicated to Java I have a FSGL, of course, I have as a developer, I can start developing an, ap an application. So I'm not going to go into details of this proof of concept, but if I go back where I was before, you have the render perform function that we already studied before that we'd seen in UP, C, and Java. Well, this is another instantiation. Uh, context with all the parameters which are there which, on which I can actually I can navigate 
in all the different classes which are provided to me by the wrapper to check the value of a constant which is used as a parameter. So, for example, what does this app do? That's just an example about the idea of author's tool, and that's on a rest draw. That's one of the graphic resource within FSDL. And with a G8, I can uh, define the parameters of the element and find all the attributes of a res draw that I could have coded in FSDL. And I offer a graphic interface to explore all the graphic possibilities in a visual graphic way. So you're drawing, you, you're designing this Frogan slide. The library helps you. But what does it not do? Well, it doesn't do the display. It's a rendering in memory. So you see the blue square. It's because I have a Java code, which helps me get this as a memory and then adapt it, use it with uh, adapted Java technologies. So you worked as a developer. Yes, I coded the display part. I used what was available in the library in terms of rendering. And the library, as we saw on the examples, you have two representations of a slide. You have the lead and the vignette. And the library does not combine these two representations. It doesn't do any scaling either. And the rendering is in a canvas 640 to over four, 480 pixels, and that's the format the library is working from. The, lib, the library does not generate any FSDL document. It starts from the document, but there is no code generation in the library. So I'm the developer. And in this app, what I'm doing is that I'm using the parameters of the graphic interface to generate an XML part. And then I ask for the rendering of this part to the library. That's the way it works. And then the library focuses on the rendering of one slide. And it doesn't manage the Frogan side as such, because a Frogan side is a set of slides which are connected to one another with uh, hypertext, hypertext links. But this is not managed by the library. OK, thank you very much, Michelle. We said quite a lot already. So I imagine if we want to talk about it with you, you'll be available. We'll very soon have a short break. But if Philip's available, we'll try and wrap up or recap because this is an important technological brick, you know, creation, creation of tools based on FSDL. Oui, donc Philippe, euh, on a beaucoup parlé de. Enfin voilà, on peut, euh, on va pas, on va pas développer beaucoup. So, we're not going to develop too much, but can you say a few words about developing tools with the uh, raw technology, so to speak? Yes, absolutely. Um, some people started using this uh, uh, software library, and there are students from the Saint-Étienne University, Telecom Saint-Étienne, they used this software library in order to develop an author's tool. I think we'll see a picture. Here they are. Hello to all of them. If you're watching us, we won't have time to uh, listen to you, but we want to say hello. Um, so that's, they have a project underway. And the students whom you can see on the screen, they set up a project called Frogan's Designer, the objective being to uh, encourage development of Frogan's interface. And this is an interface, a graphic interface with drag and drop with uh, uh, 
Uh, We're not showing it because it's not ready to be shown, but um, that's a project which is in open source, which is going to be improved by the community of developers. So uh, go and check this link on GitHub to check out what these Frogan's designers are doing at the uh, Saint-Étienne Telecom uh, University. And you can check if you want to contribute or start doing something different. All this was done in a very simple and transparent way. And they downloaded the uh, release number 10 of the library. And of course, uh, the uh, library continued to evolve. And that's part of their contribution to the project. And it allowed all the population of developers to redistribute all these uh, tools. So they chose to do that in open source. You can also use the software library to develop a package of a product, which is then going to be sold. There is no problem about this. You owe no royalty to OP3FT. So these students, there are students and professionals using it. And if you want to use Frogan's technology using the FSDL technology library, and if you want to report any suggestions, uh, you can uh, get in touch through early questions. And um, well, would be grateful if you do that. Okay, thank you, Michel. We've seen a nice way to design slides. So you all have something in mind. You all have in mind the fact that this FSDL library is a very good toolkit to allow designers to do drag and drop and design and generate slides. So, but this is not all there is. And we can start thinking together about a multiplicity of tools and online services that could be connected to the FSDL library. We're talking about the search, en search engine. So this library can design a Frogan site or a vignette that you'd find in a Frogan site directory. And that's a perfect transition because that's what we're going to talk about next. We can also, we also, we can also think about tutorials. You're all familiar with tutorials on the web. And you just have a bit of HTML and you get the rendering. I don't see why we can do that, but a bit of FSDL to get rendering in a tutorial. So we can talk about this. We can think about it. There are many tools that can be very useful to many people. And you can make them available the way you want and redistribute them the way you want. Thank you very much, sir, for this presentation.